And now let's talk about the BBC, the national broadcaster of the United Kingdom. It seems to be making more news than reporting it. You know, like gonzo journalism, BBC style. In case you're wondering what is gonzo journalism, it's when a reporter is no longer an observer, but an active participant in a story. The BBC has aced it. Here's the latest controversy with an unlikely protagonist, former English footballer and sports broadcaster Gary Lineker. The BBC's highest paid presenter, the host of a highly popular football show called Match of the Day. The controversy started, like most things nowadays, with a tweet. Lineker slammed a tweet by the UK government. It had a video message by Home Secretary Suela Braverman. Enough is enough. We must stop the boats. She was justifying the government's controversial migration policy. They're calling it Stop the Boats. Basically, it's a policy aimed at stopping illegal immigrants, deporting them to their home country or a third country like Rwanda. The policy is quite controversial. The Home Secretary was justifying it, and Lineker's response was typically British. Let me tell you what he said. I'm quoting. Good heavens, this is beyond awful. He then went on to compare it to the rhetoric of Nazi-era Germany. Now, here's something I must tell you. Lineker's criticism is not unique. A lot of people in and outside of Britain have slammed this bill. The United Nations, for instance, said, this bill will make Britain an outlaw. And Lineker slammed it too. He did this on his own Twitter page, not the page of the BBC sports show that he hosts. So this tweet, basically, was in no way connected to the BBC, nor did it involve them. But the preachers of impartiality just couldn't stay out of it. The BBC forced Lineker to, quote-unquote, step back from his duties as a presenter. Why? Because he had apparently breached the BBC's guidelines on impartiality. Yes, the word they love to use, a little too conveniently, we say. This time it backfired. Lineker was taken off air. The BBC, which has long been criticized for serving the government's agenda, said that he'll be put back on the show. But only after, and I'm quoting, only after an agreed and clear position on his use of social media. What followed was a storm. The staff backed Lineker. Many other presenters and commentators refused to show up for work. On Sunday, the BBC's radio and TV coverage was badly hit. They were forced to scrap a large part of their weekend soccer programming. And this is right in the middle of the Premier League. Talk about a self-goal. The leadership is under pressure. There's severe public backlash. But the BBC's Director General, Tim Davey, has refused to resign. It was his decision to take Lineker off air. Now, the row has reached 10 Downing Street. Remember, the BBC is a public-funded broadcaster, but Prime Minister Rishi Sunak does not want to enter the story. This is what he said, and I'm quoting again. I hope that the current situation between Gary Lineker and the BBC can be resolved in a timely manner, but it is rightly a matter for them, not the government. Interestingly, the Prime Minister did not forget to praise Lineker as, and I'm quoting, a great footballer and a talented presenter. So the government does not want to get dragged into this dispute, which leaves us with the broadcaster once again exposed for its hypocrisy over impartiality. When BBC's boss Tim Davey took office in 2020, he declared a war on woke. What does that mean? A conscious attempt to tackle perceived left-wing bias. But the Lineker incident has exposed them again and given fresh ammo to critics who say the organization is too close to the ruling party, the Tories. The BBC is not acting impartially by caving in to Tory MPs who are complaining about Gary Lineker. They've got this one badly wrong, and now they're very, very exposed, as is the government, because at the heart of this is the government's failure on the asylum system. Now, a sports presenter has been taken to task for his political views. You may remember... That BBC offices in India were recently raided. This was over tax irregularities, but they painted it as an attempt to gag free speech. The same Tim Davey, the BBC boss, wrote an email to his staff then. He said, and I'm quoting, nothing is more important than our ability to report without fear or favor. Well, what happened now? Why can't Gary Lineker speak without fear against the UK government? Or does the rule only apply to former British colonies? 
Meanwhile, the chairperson of the BBC, Richard Sharp, is currently facing two investigations. He's accused of doing favours to former Prime Minister Boris Johnson in exchange for his job as a BBC chair. This turn of events is brutal. The BBC loves to preach. It talks about impartiality, speaking truth to power. It runs biased documentaries based on allegations which have been dismissed by the Supreme Court of India. It's like the broadcaster is running its own kangaroo court. But when the story hits home, it is quick to silence critics. This controversy has put them on the back foot. An agreement has been reached with Lineker. We're told he'll resume his duties from this weekend, but the BBC's dented reputation has taken another hit.